Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk about the 2013 election gun ban over here in the Philippines. So first off, what is this 2013 COMELEC gun ban? In its rules and regulations, it is the ban on bearing, carrying, or transporting firearms or other deadly weapons. Strangely enough, also included is the employment, availment, or engagement of the services of security personnel or bodyguards during the election period. The election period being January 13, 2013 until June 12, 2013. Commission on Elections, or COMELEC Chair, Sixto Brillantes Jr., came out with a statement on the election gun ban. He said he would want to meet with the PNP to determine if the crime situation had worsened since the election period started on January 13. A growing crime rate is the worry of everybody, election period or not. Brillanta said he would talk with PNP chief Alan Purissima on Saturday to find out about the crime situation in the country. Well, Mr. Brillantes, here's a brief update on the crime situation since the election gun ban started. Now these are all the incidents cited in mainstream media. So if there's anything that I'm missing out on, this is not the whole story. January 13th, Sunday, start of the six month election gun ban. Isabella village chief shot dead on first day of gun ban. January 14th, Monday, couple gunned down in Negros Occidental. January 15, Tuesday. Killers continue to defy election gun ban. Shoot dead trader in Marikina. January 26, Saturday. Shooting incident in SM Mega Mall causes panic. So this is the incident where the Martilio gang used a hammer, stole some jewelry from a jewelry store. And one of them was armed with a 45 caliber pistol, as stated in the news. They locked down the mall, and it was a mess. January 28th, Monday. A Chinese businessman shot dead in San Juan. And this businessman just happened to withdraw 800,000 pesos. And shortly after, a man approached him, fired upon him, and killed him. So you can read more about it in the article. January 29th, Tuesday. Carpenter shot dead in Pasi. So Carpenter was shot dead. I believe a, a homemade weapon or a sumpa was used in this crime. So whether you have a, an unlicensed or illegally acquired gun, criminals will always find a way. Some even make their own weapon. Same day, January 29, Tuesday. Robbers strike at Western Union branch. I believe this happened in Sukat, Paranaque City, and one of the Western Union or money transfer branches. The criminals here used a motorcycle. So I believe there were two of them. They, were, they even found shell casings of a pistol and rifle. Imagine that. Uh, casings on the ground. This then stopped the criminals. January 30, Wednesday. Guard, gunmen, trade shots at Robinson's Magnolia. Newly opened mall, parking a lot. The guard gets into a gunfight with these criminals. Another concern I want to raise is working for a feasible solution and not just a feel-good solution. In the article, Interior Secretary Mar Rojas stated that manpower shortage was a major cause for the police's failure to stop crimes. There's really a big problem involving manpower and we cannot solve that immediately. Besides the lack of manpower, there's also the problem involving intelligence gathering and other resources, Rojas said. So, what can we do? Well, one of the cheapest and most efficient manpower solutions, how about civilians? In particular, 
I'm talking about responsible gun owners. That is the whole point of responsible gun owners who decide to undertake the responsibility of concealed carry. The ratio of policemen to civilians will never be enough. If you want a high ratio of armed personnel to protect civilians, well, we could take a look at Israel. According to the Israeli Security Service Law, mandatory military service at the IDF or the Israel Defense Forces is required by fit male and female citizens once they reach the age of 18. It is actually a law for the people to defend and protect their country. Now I'm not saying everything is perfect over there in Israel because there is still crime, they still have their problems. And imagine if they didn't do that. I just wonder how things would have turned out. But for those who think that the police is the ultimate solution, I have all respect and appreciation for those policemen who give service to the people with honor. We all know that it's easy to fall into corruption and there are many bad cops out there. I've had my own personal experiences with them. But here's something to think about. A quote on how criminals operate. People don't do stupid shit in front of uniformed police officers. It doesn't work that way. And remember, in many crimes, the police get there when it's already over. So the gun ban as it was implemented does not make sense. The facts prove that it does not work and it is failing miserably. At this rate, as much as I do not want it to happen, the armed criminals will keep coming. Why we do something constructive, not destructive? If we take a look at the facts and do our research, in places that actually allow or require its people to have a gun, we actually see lower rates of murder and violent crime. We can take a look at Switzerland. We can take a look at the USA, where certain states that allow its citizens to carry or to have a gun to protect themselves. The state of Vermont, Arizona, Alaska, Wyoming. Violent crime actually dropped after passing laws legalizing the carrying of a firearm. Now, on the other side, places with strict gun control actually have very high violent crime. We could take a look at Australia, the UK, Jamaica, Mexico, the USA, the states of Washington DC and Chicago. They have the highest form of gun control. Its people are not allowed to carry or to own firearms. And in these places, the violent crime is really high. And actually that is what is happening right now. So for those who don't see it, and I didn't see it before, I was actually pretty scared of guns and firearms. And this kind of blinded me from seeing that crime actually does go up when there's gun control. And I wonder why. If you take away this dangerous thing, why would we live in a more dangerous place? It's when I realized this philosophy of understanding over fear that I finally got it. The gun can actually be used to save lives and to protect people. And right now, when you take them away from the law-abiding citizens, it's only the criminals who have the guns. It's only the criminals who will keep on hurting the people, while we people have nothing to defend ourselves with. So what I'm saying is, this gun ban is punishing the wrong people, responsible, law-abiding citizens, while criminals just brush it off since they do not follow the law. They will continue hurting people. I'm not saying that anyone or everyone should have a gun. You have the freedom of choice. In fact, our country already has strict gun laws in place, even before the gun ban was implemented. It takes a mature, safe and proficient individual to become a responsible gun owner. The gun is merely a tool 
for defense. Some see it as insurance. We hope we don't have to use it, but at the moment we need it, it can actually save our life.